Good morning again, everyone. Welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. Another day on mullet. Big day today on mullet. Lots and lots and lots of stuff going on. Travis is doing the tab for the fire handle. So just like the lawn dart, there will be one, basically the driver will be able to, well, Cletus, will be able to throw his hand up if the car is ever on fire, reach right up, grab the fire handle to fire the, to activate the fire system. There will also be one at the back of the car so that if something's on fire, you can run up and pull from the back of the car. So it'll be a two place activation fire system. And we've got to do something, another project that Travis is working on in between me welding and all kinds of other little stuff. We've got to do some custom, custom fittings. And how we're doing the fuel system is you can see back down in there. So we got to connect those two together for the, for the race fuel pump. And you can see kind of how close they are up here as well. Well, a one, a 180 won't work because they're at different depths from each other. So you can see under there. So we're just going to make something custom. Travis is going to do the video on that while I'm doing some welding, but for now, let's get to work. All right, everybody, we're gonna try something new for this channel at least. We're gonna try and put a welding helmet in front of the camera and get in real close on the welding and see if you can actually see what's going on. Might work, might not. This might make it in the video, might not. But let's see what happens. All right, you ready? Yep. You could probably put them. Yeah, oh, that's hot. Put them in here like this, and just tack the inside. Yeah. It'd be it'll work. It'll be the most. Okay, give me this one. Flip that one over. This is hot. Put a stick and drill bit in it. The drill bit will be up. Yeah, just to hold it while you squish it. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. I'm not sure it's going to hold though. Well, I can hold the other one. Can I hold it? Yeah. 
Custom! <laughs> He's gonna burn the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it might. Alright, here we go. It ain't much of attack, but let me flip it around and come out from this side now. I'm starting to try to arc to the the uh, device. Cool. So if this looks like it'll work, um, if your centers look right, mm -hmm. then you go ahead and weld it. No, I'll go, I'll go ahead and weld this fully, and then you can make your other spacer. That's what I said. Oh. I said, you're going to go ahead and weld it? No, I'll go ahead and weld it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's see if this joker fits. It's looking pretty straight. How's it look from over there? Looking pretty good. All right. I think it angled a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Is that half an inch? Just over half. Five fifty. Okay. All right, and in case anybody's wondering or is worried, I have a pressure tester kit. So as soon as this is welded, we're gonna pressure test it to 200 and probably at least 200 PSI. And the fuel system, 40 base plus 40 pounds of boost. 100 PSI should be about the max uh, we should ever see in this system, I think. 100, I know soccer mom, we run soccer mom at 120. So, but anyways, if I pressure test it, 200 PSI, should be plenty in the clear. That's just some of the custom stuff we gotta go through to make things work sometimes. But hey, it'd be pretty sweet if we make this work out. Cause otherwise we'd have to make some big giant loop around the back of the manifold and it's already gonna be busy enough back here. So if we can make just a little short loop that connects those two together, perfect. That works, just a little blurry. Is it blurry? Just Dang. a little bit. It's like it don't have nothing to focus on. Well, this, um, that that thing's got scratches all in it too. That lens. I may have to get the real camera on it. And do the same thing I actually have somebody, you know, operating the focus on it. Custom.
yeah, there you go. Come out from. See if that actually works. I'll tack this and then we'll pull the drill bit out. Go ahead and weld it. I mean, oops, my bad. I'm not sure it's good So for those wondering what kind of welder we use here at KSR, it's an HTP Invertig 221. And I got that because of the, um, I had an old analog machine and basically you're stuck on a certain frequency, which I think is 60 Hertz. So your aluminum welding ends up being kind of big, but with the higher frequency you can really hone it down to a little tiny point and get you know get these really small small welds which these aren't my prettiest welds by any means but i'm trying to stay really low heat so that i don't blister it on the inside of the inside of the tube there but this thing's coming together travis is going to test fit one more time and then we're going to start welding it like final welding it all right so what we're doing for the final weld we are right everything's bolted to the fuel rails and we're going to weld a little bit let it cool weld a little bit let it cool so that we know that as much weld as i can do on the car to make sure that it fits the dimensions we need it to fit so let's uh see what we can do here just to get some weld on this you might be limited on here we go <laughs> Let that cool a little bit. How's that for custom? Yeah, 
now. Moment of truth. Is our fitting gonna fit? I think it's going on. Just gotta do either both of them at the same time or do a little on one, a little on the other. Over on the table. So what we can do now, which I don't know if I've got two unions. I was gonna say we could test it, pressure test it on the car again too, just to make sure it's mated good with those. Alright, so we got to the point where I needed to put the camera down and get some work done. So I thought I would just do an kind of an overview of everything that we got done today. And you guys saw the uh, kind of the fabrication on the little custom fitting for the back of the intake manifold. Somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, can't even see what's going on on the camera. So that's all done and tightened in. I have started plotting out my fittings for the fuel system and the cooling system. I've got a ton of fittings to order. You know, I've got to plumb every fluid system in this car. So we've got transmission fluid. We need to plumb to the cooler and back, obviously, and through the dump valve and the sensors and everything like that. We've got the valve covers. We need to plumb to the breather tank, which I think I'm going to put in the bed of the El Camino. Uh, we've got two fuel systems, the cooling system, and I think that's it. Uh, nope, I've got the oil drains for the turbos. So, lots and lots of stuff. We also got some brackets mounted to the radiator. So this is the radiator combination. Big AFCO radiator and derail fan set. So you can see we made kind of our own little custom brackets there. TIG welded them on. And then those will get some nut certs in them. And then we'll use a rubber seal around all this. Which I've got to tighten this gap up. You see this gap's a little bigger on this side than it is on the other side. But it's touching right there in that corner. So we'll get the sander after that. You see we started, we put this fitting here. But I think I'm actually going to turn it and bring it up here. So that I can take a 90 and then turn it in front of the radiator instead of a... Like a 180 doesn't make sense here because then it'll turn right back into the fan. But that's my fault for kind of doing something. Got the car ahead of the horse a little bit. Happens from time to time. But we got that done. And then I showed you the front wheel speed sensor the other day uh, in the wiring video. But we got that installed. And... This is how it works. So, got my little temporary battery right here, which this is the battery that's powering the lawn dart. It's mounted up under the floor, and that little joker will crank over 5.3 liter turbo car, no problem. And actually, we had one in uh, the Viper for a while until we put um, 
a different setup in there that actually had a little bit more reserve capacity. It's small and lightweight, but will run an entire race if the alternator fails. Pretty fancy piece, also very expensive, but that's road racing. So anyways, let's look at this little bracket here. You can see the, the ABS tone ring on the hub. So I had to take the hub off and machine it so that the ring would would press on and we got the fitment right and everything to where we heated the ring and slid that slid that joker on there and it will not come off of there and we've got our low dollar motorsports sensor this is a higher frequency sensor than what i normally use because there's a whole lot of teeth on there you can see but the neat thing about these sensors in particular Watch right there. Blink, 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 blink. So for checking to see if the sensor is working, you got a nifty little LED right there on the end of the sensor. And I think that's pretty cool. So that begins some of the wiring actually on the car. And we'll shorten this wire and put it on a Deutsch connector so it can be you know, removed and the hub can be removed and unwired from the car. But we're rocking and rolling. Uh, most of the seat belt stuff is mounted and the seat mounts. I will touch on that in the next video because if you didn't see my seat belt video, go back and watch that. So I made some suggestions on how to best tighten your belts, at least my opinion on how to best tighten the belts. But we can also see some of the mounting solutions we've done in this car and the proper mounting locations for seat belts as well. Seat belts save your life, so use them. In a race car, in a street car. So thanks for watching. Appreciate everybody watching through the video and subscribing and commenting and sharing and all that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one.